Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me this morning. My name is Leslie Turner. I am a certified records manager with uh, Washington State Archives. My official title is Electronic Records Management Consultant. I tend to self-proclaim and shorten it and claim that I am the records goddess for Washington State Archives, and I'm very happy to join you this morning on digital hoarding and emails. I think there's not too much argument with there's just too much. I work with a lot of agencies and every single one of them tends to hold on to way too many emails. We are literally an overload and it's just too much. So the reason of this session is to get you some guidance and give you some strategies to do some cleaning up. And what that looks like, especially if you're looking to do some wholesale cleansing, so to speak, you'll want to be able to do that in a defensible manner. It doesn't look too good if you're doing a disposition or wanting to destroy millions of emails, but not have any kind of accountability or human oversight to that. And so the last half of the session is literally a step-by-step -step methodology for doing some cleaning up. So once upon a time in an agency not so far away, things were pretty well organized. Back in the day, uh, the glory days, shall we say, when paper was the most common media and paperly, paper was kind of just determined that was your record. A printed out form, a document in the form of a piece of paper or a report or an audit report or some kind of something that was issued came in a piece of paper. And there was a controlled environment. You had a central file room or a file drawer. Sometimes it was even locked. But there was a process involved with it. And everyone pretty much knew what they needed to do. Your staff knew where they needed to file the information, where to go to retrieve a file that they wanted, and in lieu of that, if there was a large enough organization, you ask somebody, hey, would you mind finding me this file from Central Files? And there was usually a female involved, um, not to be discrimination or anything like that, but it was traditionally a woman who was a secretarial file clerk. And they took care of the information. They took care of that organizational structure. They took care of the labeling. I mean, back in the day, they even had classes on filing and labeling things. You labeled things based on your agency's need, alphanumeric, alpha combinations, and there is a system in place to manage paper records. And it's always been that way. I mean, for centuries, humans have created records in some kind of a format. And in order to survive and do business, you had to be organized. You needed to know what your inventory and goods were. You needed to know your financial pictures. You needed to know ordering and business assets and tracking and inventory. And you just need to know all that stuff. And in order to do that, you look to your records to provide that information for you. Humans come and go. Within an agency, people come and go all the time. Your leadership changes. And it's the records that remain behind that provide for the continuity of your business. Now, a colleague of mine, her name is Cynthia Jones with the Department of Financial Institution, likes to say technology and business got married in the 80s. And I would say I agree with that. Technology and business got married in the 80s. We're in severe need of counseling. And I'd like to add that records management became the redheaded stepchild then and has not been part of the family. And I love this flat diagram. This, I think, illustrates really clearly how we do business today. And it's kind of a chaotic, random, no systems to it approach. So this work group I'm involved with involves Cynthia Jones. She's at the top in red. I'm this person down here in the purple. And it's typical that when you send an email out to the work group, you're attaching a document to it. And what typically happens is that everybody in the work group gets a copy by an email. Well, to take it one step further, someone in this work group goes, well, I've got a SharePoint site. So let's stick a copy of that document on our SharePoint site. 
everybody can have access. Well, sometimes that's true, sometimes it's not. My particular agency was not involved with the served services with the state. And we tried really hard to get me access to SharePoint, but it never worked. So in the meantime, you can place bets. Everyone's keeping copies, and everyone's keeping all those emails. Well, you'll notice the little stacks of documents in the IT department. That's where stuff's being stored in everybody's systems. And there and again, there's arrows shooting around everywhere. And it's quite common for someone to share this information, so we'll forward yet another email. And then someone in the group says, well, I've got a box site. It's secure. There's a master contract for the state. So let's put another copy in box. Well, by now, this small, relatively small work group has probably got at least 20 copies of stuff floating around there and the same equivalent of emails. Now, in several instances, if your agency gets a public records request, that poor legal person with the explanation point how many places do they have to look? How many millions of documents or emails are they having to sort through in order to be responsive to a records request? And then generally speaking, you've got the poor records person in the corner, and you'll notice there are no arrows connecting them. And oh, by the way, there's a little rule within RCW 4256 that says agencies are to provide full public access to public records and protect them from damage or disorganization. Yes, that's in statute. So what has happened with technology is the Dragon Ladies, and apologies to both Dragons and Ladies, but those traditional roles of the gatekeepers went away. And the administrative tasks of cleaning your desk and sorting through the paperwork and making sure your files were updated and everything like that shifted to the end users. Now, your typical business person doesn't have a clue on how to systematically organize their information. They just want to do their jobs. So in self-defense, people come up with really great ways to try and organize. And I'm sure you've probably opened up a shared drive or, an Outlook, or seen an Outlook folder that says Mary's, Ted's, or Joe's files. That's not helpful. Or everyone will shove all their information for a single year into one big ginormous folder. Or they'll call it my stuff or something. And what happened when technology and business got married, no one signed a prenuptial, no one did any pre-planning, there were no joint accounts set up, or any tools or strategies to organize electronic information. And once the secretaries and file clerks went away, and there's no app for that. That, in tandem with the fact that there's no limits. I mean, there are. But back in the 80s, a 50 megabyte hard disk drive you could acquire for 2,500 bucks. Now, my PowerPoints are about 50 megabytes. So you can only imagine the volume that we've been creating just merrily along the way without having a thought to any limits or any means of disposing of information. And it's becoming very painful. Yeah, technology has allowed us to do all this, but it's also just allowed us to store mindlessly. And we're shoving things into one endless closet. And if you've ever seen that hoarder show on A&E, after a while, that level of disorganization, you stop to function. You get overwhelmed, and you don't even want to do anything. So I have one county I'm working with that has 30 terabytes of emails, just emails they're storing. I have another state agency, 120 million emails. And that's just emails. That is not including all the other unstructured data, your Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, and the gazillions of duplicates. And this is reaching epic levels, and it's reaching epic problems. Now, what happens when you get a records request, if you've got all that information, then all the rules regarding disclosure are still relevant. Now, the other painful aspect of this is who's got the time and energy? Yes, you can have the most robust keyword search feature on the planet, but you're still requiring human effort. 
And it's a whole lot easier to search through a single megabyte of information that needle in a haystack approach. And let's put that into perspective. One gigabyte, roughly speaking, contains 100,000 emails, give or take, depending on the size and any, and any attachments. 100,000 emails. A terabyte of storage is a thousand times a single gigabyte. Now, I don't do math, but I'm smart enough to know that's a lot. And it's unfortunate. Now, a lot of agencies and, and reactions we get from people is that Washington State Archives, we, are, we hate on technology, we despise it. And that's not the case. We actually love technology. I use, a ton, use it a ton. In fact, I use the internet a lot. And I was looking for a description of a hoarder, and I found this from Urban Dictionary, and this says it all. A hoarder is anyone that feels the need to find, collect, keep, pack, anything and everything because they do not know how to throw things away. And that's so true. How many agencies that you know of actually have records management orientation and training for all their staff? So they can let staff know, you know what, you don't have to keep this, you do need to keep this, and this is what you do with it. So by default and lack of planning, and, and it's just happened, who knew technology would take over the way it has? And so most agencies I work with have become digital orders. Now, true confessions time, I'm going to ask if anybody in the, the listening group out there is willing to admit how many emails are in your sent box? Please respond in chat if you're willing to do that. It is pretty kind of anonymous. But if you're willing to do that, and then I'll share my world record. So any takers? I'll just wait for a few minutes if someone will be willing to admit. And this is just in your sent box. Anybody? If we were in a live situation, I'd be handing out chocolate by now. Oh, I have no takers. That's OK. I'm still open. Oh, here we go. Thank you. 200. That's not bad. Oh my gosh. OK. Now, think of it this way. Would you be happy to have 200 letters sitting on your desk staring at you? Can you imagine the equivalent of a million pieces of paper sitting on someone's desk that they have to go sort through during a records request. Now, my current world record that was set a year ago last April, somebody had 44,000 emails in their inbox. Now, if that's not hoarding, I don't know what is. And it's the same thing. They honestly didn't know what to do. And that's where records management can be of a huge benefit to you. When you reach that level, though, you really do have to admit that there's a bit of a problem. And there are some very basic things you can do that will not require you to buy any extra software or anything like that. The email problem is actually a human problem. It's a human behavior and a lack of a strategy. And that two combined has reached epic levels of, of volume being built up. So same thing like that hoarder show, you kind of got to admit there's a problem. And you do have to kind of admit and go through a process to get there. There is change management involved. But there's some very basic things you can do to defensively get rid of huge blocks of information and at least start cleaning, clearing the decks. And then you start planning a different strategy going forward. Yeah, we're human, and we are very much creatures of habit. You know, it's funny to me that we hate change, but yet any new technology we will embrace, and we have no problem learning how to use the new phone and the new apps. So we just need to dial it down a little bit, take a deep breath. Yes, everyone is busy. Another one of those consequences of technology, I don't know if I'm the only one to point that out or not, but there are some very basic tools out there that you can utilize and some steps you can take. So first things first, become best friends with retention schedules. Now, I'm assuming that you're listening to this and you have some smattering of knowledge of what a retention schedule is. 
but your retention schedules that are approved by a committee are your instruction manuals for what to do with your types of records. They tell you what records you're required to keep, and I always like to emphasize there is no requirement anywhere at all to keep everything. There just isn't. Now, this example is from the core, which is the common records for local government. State agencies have an equivalence group of series. But there's a whole bunch of records we call records with minimal retention value that you are not required to keep. And you can delete, delete, destroy at will. And retain until no longer needed for agency business. A huge amount of secondary copies you can get rid of. A huge amount of transitory records. Now let me explain something about transitory records. Don't get carried away. Transitory records are those that you do not need to keep as evidence of a business transaction. They're not covered by more specific record series. They're temporary short-term value. Most transitory records are the, the form of records that are the for your information, oh, by the way, notifications, notices, uh, cookies in the break room announcements, uh, the brief little blurbs you may get from other agencies, miscellaneous notices that do not relate to anything of the mission of your agency, social announcements. Hey, so-and-so had a baby. Congratulations. It's with sadness we're announcing. Any of that kind of record, you do not have to keep. You're just required to keep the evidence and the conduct of your business. So let's start the process. Do a little bit of an inventory and assessment. You need to know what you have before you can start getting rid of the rot. Now, ROT is a common acronym in our world. It stands for redundant, outdated, or obsolete, and trivial information. And that includes outdated records that are way past their retention. And how you figure that out is knowing your business and knowing your records. I get that question a lot. People say, what am I required to keep? And yes, I'm the world's biggest busybody, but I don't know what you do. I don't know your requirements. So there's a bit of an analysis you can do at a very high level to figure out what you're not required to keep. Start the cleanup with those, and then start doing some analysis of what's left. Now, you don't want to just back up the dumpster and start shoveling. Any wholesale bulk disposal of information without documentation or supervision is a very bad idea, and it's certainly not very defensible. I like to tell people, you know what, pretend you've got an auditor knocking at the door and a judge looking at you. How are you going to defend what you did? How are you going to defend the agency's actions and decisions during a bulk cleanup? And it's too hard is not a very valid reason either. In fact, that's an excuse. And the courts nowadays are not buying any kind of excuse. And they're coming down hard on agencies who wring their hands and go, well, we didn't know, we couldn't do it, it's too hard. Well, it is not easy. Although if we found all figured out going in, it would be easy to do. But the whole point and purpose of records management is to help you manage and disposition records in bulk. It's the equivalent in the paper world. It, made, it was a lot easier to manage boxes of paperwork, a box at a time, than taking out every single document and sorting through it and then assigning a retention period to the, every single one within a box. Not to mention reviewing every single email for either a cleanup or a disclosure, just as very time consuming and expensive. And it's just not a very cost effective approach to any of this. Again, you want to avoid build up in the future. You know, develop some training programs, encourage regular housekeeping duties. A lot of times I will get people who literally will tell me it's not my job. And I get that. Records management is not their job. 
but every job in the public sector comes with this obligation for the care and feeding of public records. And doing your daily administrative chores comes with the territory. And we all have administrative duties we have to do as part of our jobs. I mean, I just can't take a motor pool car without filling out some kind of paperwork. The, the, you know, I have limitations on my travel and things like that. Those are all part of my job. But it's the fiscal's job to manage that. But I have certain chores and duties I have to do as part of my job. There are ways to search and destroy in bulk the junk emails and those that have met retention. I get pushback. A lot of people ask me, well, is it required? And I have to honestly say, no, it is not required by statute. However, it's an important best practice for a records management program. Now, again, in my world, there's actually a standard. It's called the ISO 15489. And it's a process standard. And it's a repeatable process of managing information. Part of the issue we face today is records management is not a process. It's been hit and miss. It's not been systematic at all. A lot of agencies, their disclosure person also does records management. And if you're a large enough organization, that doesn't serve you well because they're busy doing public disclosure and can't get to the records management. Now, people get a little huckered up when I talk about defensible disposition. In this instance, it is not meant to apply to that regular housekeeping stuff. If you're daily getting rid of your go Seahawks and, hey, it's pouring buckets and the YouTube, you know, cute cat videos, you don't have to document every time you delete one of those. That doesn't make sense. This process, though, is designed to be part of that bulk management and bulk disposition. Same thing, you wouldn't document crumpling up a single post-it note and tossing it in the recycle bin when you're done with it. The idea is if you've got a retention requirement, you'll want to document what happened to that information. So I hope people understand that. Defensible disposition is all about documentation, leaving audit and paper trails that you create to support your actions and outcomes. Use one or more. The more human intervention and the more pairs of eyes that see this stuff and what's going on, and there again, that's not to examine every single email, but from a higher level, document your good faith efforts. And if you've attended open government training with Nancy Creer, documenting those good faith efforts can save you in court. You may still end up with a lawsuit. I mean, you just can't prevent those sometimes. But if you show mitigating factors that you're doing the training, that you're doing your due diligence, that you're doing your best, that you're supporting your actions and reasons for getting rid of stuff, document your training, that is a, a good way to get any kind of penalty that might be coming down to be less. There are tools available to help you. Even Outlook has keyword search features that you can do to identify large chunks of emails that you can then look to destroy. What you do is you do some keyword searches, you document your results, you cast a wide net, and then you work to destroy it. Beyond the defense, appropriate little, and it doesn't have to be war and peace, just little beef, kind of almost like filling out an exemption log. You want to just have a little brief explanation of what you're doing, what authority you use to get rid of it. And remember, attention, retention schedules are your ongoing legal authority to get rid of stuff. You know, maybe look at this as a project management type of situation. You want to define the project and then document what's going on. Now, you all know that there are instances you've got to apply the brakes, that all bets are off. If you've got a litigation hold going on on some of this information, you can't get rid of it no matter what. Same thing if you have an open public records request. But there's a good chance your junk email, you're not going to have a litigation hold on it, but that's just something to be aware of. 
again, please avoid just backing up the dumpster and shoveling things in. Make it a project, finish it. Same type of thing. Part of the problem we face is people start something and then they stop it. Make a commitment, devote some effort, and I know of an agency, Department of Financial Institutions, has been able to clean up a great number of their documents and emails, and it's just someone part-time doing this, but they dedicate like a couple hours each week to start plowing through some of this stuff. So it's very basic. Again, start with the most common keywords you can come up with. For example, event announcements, breakfast, lunch, dinner, potlucks, birthdays, retirements, congratulations, so-and-so had a baby. Any sports-related stuff. I mean, yes, what the Seahawks winning the Super Bowl was historic, and there is a huge spike in email traffic. But that does have, not have anything to do with your agency business. Unless you're managing the kingdom or by the Seahawks, Mariners, Sounders, Super Bowl, World Series, FIFA, any kind of events, announcements, go get rid of them. Your community board type announcements, hey, it's bring, you know, prepare for bring your kid to work day, it's National Belly Laugh Day, all those little incidental things that you do to try and make a sense of community within your organization, you're not required to keep those. Any kind of weather related, there's always a distinctive spike whenever it snows, especially on the west side of the mountains. Uh, things tend to come to a screeching halt. You don't have to keep those type of things. Unless you're Department of Transportation and you have to keep those traffic alerts, don't. Outlook notifications, hey, someone so is out of office, read receipts, that sort of thing, you don't have to keep those. Announcements that you're cleaning carpets, that there's an IT outage, that there's an upgrade coming down, the, that they're sweeping out the parking lot. You can maybe spend a few minutes just analyzing the typical chat type of emails that your agency gets and your business unit gets. Now here's another real life example. Another agency is doing an email cleanup and they did a search query on these terms. And these are the numbers that came back. Now, news and press releases, those are notices. Those are not the original press releases. These are news links, Facebook notices, hey, you've been liked. Returned over a million emails. I mean, and they're paying for all this. I mean, to my mind, there's a huge lot of waste there in storing that many emails that have nothing to do with your agency business. Job bulletins, job announcements, employment opportunities. That's close to a gigabyte of information. Retirement, employee awards, memorial recognitions with sadness announcements. Five gigs right there. Now as part of the process, you also can identify those emails that do mean business. Sit down for a little bit and think about what is it that each business unit's mission is. And here's just some helpful hints at Department of Ecology. Toxic cleanup program. You can do some very defined keyword searches surrounding that program using your agency speak and those common terms to that program to locate those emails that mean business. And then you can figure out and work on a program and a strategy to store those and manage those differently. Think about what happened in the past. Did something happen to your organization to make the newspaper? Are there any ed light issues that you're involved with? Anything historically significant? Hey, you know, let's say, you know, Kitsap Transit is 50 years old. You know, and there are things that happen during the course of an agency lifetime that make a fairly significant difference. Any man-made or natural disasters? You know, was your agency involved in some kind of, you know, oil spill somewhere along the way? Those are, would be emails that mean business outside of your ordinary course of business. So the approach to take when you're trying to do some cleanup with emails is to take some information and guidance from what the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure allow. For e-discovery anymore, there's sampling. And what that does is it does kind of this keyword searching and you pull a sample that gives you a typical, well, literally a sampling 
of the types of emails that come back. And then you can do some analyses and see what does that typical batch of emails contain. And then you can rule things out and you can pluck those from the server and get rid of them. Define your scope and boundaries. That's also helpful. Pick a time frame. This is kind of part of that systematic process. You have a third party, just pick weeks out of a hat. This is just an example. And then you do those keyword searches. And this is going to be representative of a typical week in the life. Once you've cast that net, analyze it. What's coming back? Do you have any keepers? And then document your process. I'm going to slide forward here and show you some forms you can utilize. Once you've made the selection, you'll evaluate it. And then document, document, and document some more. Your audit trails, what you do, what looks like it. Now, I am not an Excel spreadsheet whiz, but you can put together a very basic Excel spreadsheet Explaining your catch. So category of emails, just a brief little description of what you're talking about. Internal communications. This gives most people a quick little glance as these are the types of emails we're getting rid of. And then there's a DAN number you assign to it. This example is for a state government agency. But you're going to have a corresponding DAN number, the equivalent of it, in a local general schedule or the core schedule. There again, this isn't rocket science. It's very basic. You're documenting this is the types of emails. This is the authority to get rid of it. Write the minimum retention requirements. Was it satisfied? Yes. How many did you get? Document the date range, the first email in that batch and the last email in the batch, and then the date of destruction. And you can use this for identifying responsive records, too. That very last column is emails regarding public records requests. Now, for state government, they're required to keep those for six years. So if you work in local government, lucky you, your requirement is two years. Same type of thing. Note the cat num amount of the catch. Put down the dates of the emails you're destroying, the date range, and then when you destroyed it. And like I said, you'll notice that date range is shorter than the junk emails you're getting rid of. Pretty basic. Here's another form sample. I mean, you can use elements of any of these forms and create something that works best for you. This is more of a personal attestation, but it's the same type of thing. It lists the date range. It, it tells people in writing that a human's involved. It's a great idea to list the keyword searches that you did find. Maybe attach that to the Excel spreadsheet. These are all ways to document your process, document the keywords that you used, document your authority to get rid of it, and you're good to go. Now, there are more forms available. There again, you're, you're free to develop and create something that works best for you. The idea is, though, you're, uh, you're creating the evidence of the cleanup process. And that way, if you are hauled into court or you get a public records request for this information, you can document and pull that out and say, this is what we've done. We had no requirement to keep it. This is the type of emails we got rid of. Have a nice day. You can attach screenshots. I mean, there's multiple ways you can do this. But I think you probably all get a, an idea of it's all about document, document, document. You can't have, well, you can't have probably too much documentation. But the idea is enough to provide the evidence of what you're doing. Of course, then you're going to want to follow up and in tandem with your cleanup, avoid the bulk in the first place. So do some training. And you can engage your staff with this. Maybe what you need to do is declare an email free Friday and give, you know, do some training, bring some donuts or something like that. I usually carry chocolate with me. 
and just sit down with the different business units and help them understand, you know what, this is what you do. These are your keepers and this is what you need to do with them. All of these types of emails, feel free to delete, delete. Now, if you're using an email archiving system that is saving everything, talk to your IT and see if there isn't a way to push some buttons and get some destruction functionality into it. If you're just using Outlook, you can talk to your IT and say, you know what, we want to be able to delete, delete from the delete folder and have that information go away after 30 days or 60 days or whatever your comfort level is. Talk to your legal folks. Tell them, look, we want to be able to get rid of the junk. We don't have to keep it all. There's no requirement to do so. We've got some processes we're putting in place. And remind people, yeah, we get it. It's not your job to do records management, but everyone has some level of responsibility for the care and feeding for the work and the records they create. And I like to tell people the decisions you make in the technology world have a direct impact on your public records. What you use to create, what you use to store, and you train on everything else in your organization. You have training on ethics, you have training on harassment, you have training on policies. Public records training should be mandatory for everybody because we all touch and work with them every single day. And yeah, I get it. Nobody likes to clean house. Well, there's a few of us that I love to clean house. I just love that feeling. But the thing with keeping up a clean house is you don't have to worry about your uninvited guests. You don't have to worry about the auditor knocking at your door. You're prepared for public records requests. You know, don't worry, be happy. If you can get organized, that's a win-win all the way around. Any questions? Trust me, you are not alone. Everybody is still struggling with the email problems. It's a universal issue. But there are some very basic common sense not extra cost, just some time and effort to cut down on the volume and clear the decks. So no questions? Well, I do want to thank everybody for joining me this morning. I hope I've been able to be of some help and assistance to maybe help you do some cleanup. Everybody go forth, enjoy the rest of your Friday. Go forth and organize. Thank you very much.